Ah, welcome. Another episode of Suds with Luds. Uh, first, I want to say thanks to everybody at the Chop Shop in McKinney last week. We had a, a launch party, um, Dub Network, and Nate Newton, Derek Harper, Kevin Mench, myself, Julie Dobbs, and Emily Jones from the Mom Game. But uh, Chop Shop in McKinney hosted an unbelievable event for us to kind of get this thing off the ground, get it out in the public. Um, took good care of us and all the people that showed up and uh, we had a really good time. So thanks to everybody there that did that. And actually, my guest today was at that event and this is Brad Lukowicz. Yep. Welcome, Luke. <laughs> thanks, bud. Thanks How for having me. Been? How's awesome. everything going? Things going really well. We, we could do a few hours on this. Thing, yeah. And uh, which is always good because it's always funny to me how you got to drag shit out of the superstars, and the rest of us are willing to just let it go. Oh, yeah. Right? Let I'll it tell you spill. about them. <laughs> yeah. So let, let's start with your family. Uh, Kara, your yeah. girls. Yeah. I've been to a, an event or two here with your daughters. Yeah. Um, you have a history in the music stuff with, yeah. with some bands, and I think we have, some, we have a lot of similarities yeah. that I didn't realize until I was starting to look at some things and you know we both friends with Vinnie Paul and you know Pantera and stuff like that and yours goes even further like that but first let's talk about your daughters because they yeah. seem to have gravitated into the music uh, part of this world well the younger one definitely she's gone that route uh, she all of a sudden just picked up uh, we had like it was actually the COVID thing so there's a couple of blessings you know being at home uh, always collected instruments and guitars and stuff and dabbled, but not been the greatest player. Yeah. Uh, but you get the odd lesson here and there when you're on the road with the boys or they come over or you just try to be as cool as they are and learn a little riff or two. So I had all the stuff hanging around and she just went up there one day and said, you know, let's let's try this. So she tried drums. It wasn't her favorite, but she kind of learned, learned how to do a classic rock beat, you know, one, two, three things. And then she got onto the guitar and she's like, oh, my hands are bothering me. But she learned four or five songs playing guitar. But yeah, it's just not really my thing. You know, it's tough to play guitar and sing. I was like, oh, you want to sing as well? Great. She gravitated to the bass guitar. We had a bass guitar laying around the house and she got that into that. Um, made a phone call to someone in the industry and what do we do next like I don't know I'm, I can't teach her is it just put her on tabs on the internet like a lot of guys do and uh, I'll name drop him our buddy Jared Reddick from uh, Bowling for Soup goes you know what put her in School of Rock we put her in School of Rock and since then she's just fell in love with it she's been in two semesters now I got good word the other day that her next band is Black Sabbath so really really <laughs> pumped for that one she's really pumped for it so that's that's what she's been doing and then Michaela really what she's into she's kind of been she's a Texan girl like we didn't really realize she's as Texan as we thought but yeah. she's, she loves trucks she loves guns she loves hunting oh daddy she's, don't got to worry about uh, her when she's worry. dating and she's like she's been in like MMA <laughs> since she's five yeah. so you know she can uh, kick anybody's ass that comes through the door and uh, so I yeah she's been doing awesome and she's getting back into that so she's doing some stuff out at uh, some ranches and doing camps and clinics and teaching kids how to ride horses so she's living her best life as well she uh, Kim I got a text message on the way from from Kim and she says make sure you ask Luke when Marley's next or what is her next gig at talk a little bit about that school of rock because we went out there yeah what was that a few weeks ago we went out there yeah. like amazing thing that goes on there but explain a little bit of what happens there and is it always at the same place out there is it that same location so now, or is it moving No, around? so it's moving around. The next one's at uh, the Rubber Glove in Denton. Okay. I believe it is September 18th, actually. Okay. Um, really cool. What they do is basically they have semesters, just like summer, spring, fall. You go in there. They, it's a, there's, they're all over located near in town. So ours is we go to the one in McKinney. No, Frisco. We do the Frisco one. And... Uh, Basically, you're there for about six weeks. They do a mid-season uh, kind of showcase, and then they do another one at the end of the year, which is they'll play the full set of like 30, 40 songs, or th three or four songs, 30, 40 minute sets. And it's just a blast for everybody to get out there and have fun and see how awesome these kids are. There's kids that are like, you know, nine, 10 years old, yeah. ripping off solos. You see it's it, it's crazy. Un unbelievable. Well, is this kind of the takeoff from, it was it Jack Black had a movie I called guess. School, School of Rock or something uh, like that? Maybe, uh, maybe, maybe that's where the idea like stemmed from. It's yeah. got the same kind of banner writing and everything like that, but it's amazing. The guys at, at that place, you walk in there anytime while they're in the back. It's a really cool studio in oh, yeah. there. It, it's, it's, it's awesome. The guys, they're, they're, they're outgoing. They're, I mean, I, I love, she loves it. It's something that she's interested in doing that, you know, now it's kind of brought me into the music world again. I got yeah, all my guitars yeah. done by our boy Grady Champion uh, about two weeks ago. So now I'm trying to learn myself a little bit and do something with her. One of the girls 
that day that we were out there. I think we, you may have seen her before, but I yeah. was blown away by her. I don't oh, know. Singer? I can't remember her. Anyway, I was watching and I, and I sat behind, actually was, her mom was sitting there. Yeah. And I asked, I said, is that your daughter by any chance? And I said, she said, yeah. And I can only go back to, you know, Pantera and some of the guys that I know right. from there. But I was at like, she needs to, and, and I think her teacher was there. Her Correct. voice. Yeah, she said her side, yeah. And so I'm like, man. And it wasn't long after that, I turned around and you were talking to her. Yeah. And I'm thinking, he needs the one that needs to talk to her because you have more yeah. current connections. But that young girl right there, and she was only like, what, 15, 15 16, Maybe, yeah, something like that. Something like that. Like she, I, I thought she should have been on one of these shows with Simon Cowell. Right, and there's like a sister too that is just as, they're just as, she's just as good. She doesn't sing as much, but she plays the piano as much. Uh, and then I believe there's like a best friend or something that like there's three of them. Yeah. But that girl, oh man, like goosebumps. Anything. You're just like you're, exactly. you're, you're like you were like staring the other way. The first time I heard her, I was looking the other way, and she sang, started singing. I turned around, I was like, who is that? Uh huh. Like it's one of those. Things. She was just she's incredible. Yeah, it was. So everybody says that about her. I, she's I don't see her right now. So maybe someone picked her up. So was that what you you saw in, in in your daughter then? Like, did you see any of that, or you just went, man, where did this come from? I just went, do you know what? She wants to do it. Let's get behind it and push it. You know, like like my dad would would with hockey. You know, get behind yeah. it. Where where's where's the best way to 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 be a hockey guy? I'm gonna get you a hockey camp, get some coaches. You know, do it kind of that way. So that's what we were doing, and now it's kind of cool for me. I love to go to shows. So. She goes to everything. She, we've been mm -hmm. to Deftones now. We have got our eye on Allison Chains, Breaking Benjamin. We got we're buddies with those guys, so we're gonna nothing, head to that nothing show. Nothing current. It seems like they're all old school stuff. Like she the old man. yeah, well, Nine Inch Nails yeah. loves it. Pa Pantera. That was kind of cool. The very first time she did it, I said, "I'm gonna give you some homework of, of some bands," and I gave her some some like modern stuff, and yeah. she kind of was like, "Well, I kind of more like." The, Check this out. She plays Orion from Metallica. I'm like, are you kidding really? me? Like, we're Nine Inch Nails. Like, I, like this was day one. Uh huh. Because I got her a little uh, octave pedal so it could put some distortion on there. Just like, ah, oh, there's a little toy for you. To play yeah. With make it sound a little more gritty. She fell all over it. <clears throat> Loves it. And that's the stuff she plays now. So she, and then uh, the best part is, you, you know, this logic thing you can do, yeah. you can write all over the place. Yeah. So, I had a buddy, Dave Perez from Big Story, come up to the house, sat up there with her, and they basically went and he taught her how to do logic in probably one day. Wow. And now it's really cool to be sitting downstairs and all of a sudden you hear like the, you hear it turn on. Like, you, like the whole room will turn on. You can hear all the, all the buzzing and all those new You got soundproof rooms up there? No. Oh, dude. We need it. Especially the drum set. But, she's, but I like it though. So I actually turn the TV off and we'll just sit downstairs and make dinner and talk and listen to her and, she, and listen to her work. She'll do like rap lyrics down and it's really really cool well, and it's then, a good thing you didn't have any head uh, injuries while you were going good <laughs> well, that's probably we'll why that I, later. I don't, I don't remember <laughs> that she's been playing that long like man you mind she's been up there for four oh, hours man. like oh who <laughs> no it's a it, it's crazy about the music thing but your give me some of your bands because i know that oh, you man. have relationships with a lot of, didn't yeah. you actually even start a recording studio at some point here in dallas or something like that we, we managed bands okay. yeah that was during the lockout we had lockout entertainment and it just it was doing really well kind of fizzled like it always does when you go yeah. back to work because you can't be there you know like the i went back to playing so yeah. i couldn't be hands-on anymore way, it got, it? kind of got yeah. in the way that real job got in the way um and it sucks because the bands kind of suffered for that. So I, it's one of those things. I wish we would have had a better uh, exit plan for for when that happened. When I went yeah. back to work, because those, those bands actually suffered from that. And I've always been kind of beat myself up over that. But yeah, we had that going back in the day. It's always been there. I actually met him through the the, the big meeting was all <laughs> kind of through you at the clubhouse. I met. Uh, we went to the clubhouse after because you're like, oh, these guys are pretty the golf cool. Course well, after was, was, tour eighteen clubhouse. Yeah, or? that one. Yeah. So okay. uh, the so Vin and this guy Vinny was there, and I'm uh -huh. like, oh my gosh, any plain clothes? Like just told him. I'm kind of looking at him like that can't be. You know, he was just so normal. This guy, sure. right? And and he gave me his phone number, which wasn't like a, it was like a home number back then because we yeah. didn't have cell phones. Yeah. So I got his phone number back in the day, and I. We'd leave him messages, and he'd always call me back. And happened to be, I went to this other clubhouse, same one, but a different golf course, yeah. I guess. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, about a month later, and kind of called him. I was like, "Hey, I'm, I, I got, I, I got sent down, uh, but I'm gonna, I was wanted to go out for a big night, and this band Seven Dust was there. Uh -huh. So I actually got Seven Dust tattoo because that's kind of what opened up my whole world to this thing of how Morgan, the drummer, was like, you know what, we, we always want to be." 
you know, hockey players or athletes. It, yeah. and you guys Rockstar's want to be, want to be yeah, hockey players. Yeah, same thing, Rockstar, right? So yeah. he goes, so take my number. And I go, if you're ever out of need a show, like I, if I don't know the guy, I know someone that does. Right. And I actually was, I call. I'm like, hey, man, I, I'm in uh, wherever. And uh, the place I did it was, it, it was in Detroit. I was playing for Kalamazoo. It was about six months later. And I called Vinny. Yeah. And I was like, hey, man, uh, I see you guys are playing in Detroit. I'd love to come up and see you guys play. Would that be cool? He's like, absolutely, dude. I'll, I'll leave tickets at the door for it. how many? I'm like, uh, there's like ten of us. Yeah. He goes, oh yeah, no problem. I'm like, oh, really? Yep. He goes, oh yeah, done. That quick. I'm like, all right. So we rented this big van. We drove up there, and the Deftones got all their gear stolen that day, so they didn't even play. So Pantera's there. I think it was Black Sabbath or Ozzy. I think it was Black Sabbath at the time, and. Uh, they're, so they locked down backstage because they're like looking for this gear. They think it might be an inside thing. They don't know what's going on. Um, but Vinny's like, no. So he sends up Rita. Rita comes and grabs me, takes me downstairs, and the boys are there, and we're there partying. They're getting ready for the show. Mm -hmm. And I was so, like, a There were a bunch of crown bottles and vodka on the table. Well, and what was I, 21-year-old rookie that thought he could hang with the big boys? <laughs> yeah, I'm like 220 pounds. Yeah. I could toss guys around. I'm the... I'm, and then these guys are all yeah. this big, yeah. And I sat right in the middle of them. There's and I, they and they knew exactly what they were doing. And I realized it about well, I realized it days later, but I didn't realize what Rita was doing with that video camera the whole time. She was mm -hmm. all she was watching was that downward spiral. <laughs> yeah. of, this is what an athlete looks like when he goes <laughs> when they come into our world. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, so they, it's all the way through to me. The black tooth uh, to, uh, yeah. to them on stage, to coming off stage, to. A mountain of merch. Think I threw up in the corner somewhere along the way. <laughs> Back to sitting at the top. Then they followed me all the way to the chairs, and they had to go down and like tap the guys I was with, with on the shoulder. And they, they were mad. They're like, gonna leave me there, but they couldn't text. We didn't have phones. Yeah. But they did wait, and I come down. And I had all this merch, thankfully, because that's what saved the day. So I had all the merch for the guys. They got me into the van. I passed out in the back, and I woke up the next morning. They didn't wake me up. At like, the rink? I, I, yeah. They parked practice. at the rink. They're like, practice. Let's go, kid. Back in, pay the piper, here that's we go. That's the way it is. And that's, that's the way it was. Yeah. That's how you learn how to play guilty. Everybody yeah. said, yeah. man, so, you guys went out all the time. And I said, there was something that I got taught a long time ago was about playing guilty. And you, oh, yeah. you'd go out till 3, 4 in the morning yeah. when you're supposed to be. And you played yeah. a game the next night. And it was all about making sure that they didn't know you were out that night. So you, you always right. found a little bit more. Right. And you found a way to get through those games, yeah. more importantly. You know, and I appreciate you <laughs> giving me every single one of those lessons <laughs> and yes. tips. Some of it firsthand knowledge. It's, it's, it's funny how some of the, a lot of the guys that I talked to was always when they first came into the league. Yeah, I remember Simmer, John Sim. Good lord. Oh but, boy, <clears throat> that's a whole different story. Yeah. But but it was just some of those guys that tried to ride along. Yeah, you know, and you're like, no man, like don't do this. Like don't yeah. you know, yeah. do as I say, not as I do. And yeah. then, you know, they wanted to get their stripes and stuff like that. So that, that that's that's then. This is now. Um, did you have anybody, did, did I see a long time ago, you had somebody at your wedding? Did you have a band at your wedding? So was there a band there that played at your wedding? No, we actually, we were going to have a band at our wedding. It was supposed to be. Was, some, was, it was Nickelback fire, No, it was Firehouse. Okay. And they, and I, I, I was buddies with the, the guitar player, and they actually, like the week of our wedding, they got a gig in like Tulsa, uh -huh. and their management gets involved, right? Like. Well, because they're going to do it for free, and they're like, "Well, you know what happens when management gets involved?" Yeah, and they're like, yeah. "So unless you can," I'm like, "Oh man, I'm like strapped on this wedding." Dude. <laughs> <laughs> but what they, but the cool thing was, they actually did um, do is they went into the back of the bus and recorded a personal acoustic uh, oh. of it, and they sent it to us, and that's what we played at our wedding. So oh, there was an actual okay. message from them and a thing out. Yeah, love of a lifetime. So pretty good tune. Nice touch by those guys. It, it's amazing. Like, you get these images of rock stars and all right. that kind of stuff. But when you get them away from what the they most do. most caring guys ever. Uh, incredible. Yeah. Incredible guys. Yeah. And same thing. Like, and I always go back to Vinny. I remember people have heard this story many times. I don't want to tell the whole story. But we were in the playoffs and after we won the first round. And Vinny called me up and I said, dude, we, you know, he had given him tickets for the game the night before. Like, I'm sure you did with all your guys. And, and it was... Um, Hey, be at the airport at 6 o'clock in the morning. I said, man, we're in the playoffs. Like, what's going on? He goes, I said, I can't do that. Anyway, long story short, I called him back and said, yeah, I will. Next thing I knew, I was heading to Mexico City huh. in between the first and second round with Metallica and Pantera yeah. and some, some other bands. So yeah. um, it all turned out well. We got back. We won the cup. So that, that you know, I recommend it to everybody. All the young guys, go ahead. Somebody invites you in between the playoffs. Take it and go. Uh, a little earlier, you mentioned your dad. Yeah. He had a cup of coffee. 
in yeah. the NHL, right? Yeah. A couple teams he played for. Yeah. Yeah, he was a heck of a player, a tough, tough guy. Um, he was a forward. Yeah. Uh, he was a right winger. And basically, I think he was, he was dry, played two years. Pittsburgh and St. Louis. Um, it was when those teams were doing their... Uh, were they going from one league to one the other? One to the league to like another. Yeah. They were going from like the West, Western, the WHA, yeah. I think w, it yeah, was. Yeah. So then there's, so he was caught up in all that stuff. And to be honest with you, he was just one of those guys that was like, I just, I'd rather be around my kids and go work. So he just yeah. packed it up and went, uh, if you take Vancouver and you take basically North Battleford in Canada and you go like this 12 hours each way, right in the middle right is a middle. little town called Cranbrook, British Columbia. Yeah. There was a great senior league back then, and a lot of senior guys were playing in that league. That's basically my hometown. I was born in yeah. Vancouver, but the first two years, we I still my dad was still playing, so right. we traveled to like I lived in Virginia Beach and like for a little bit, and then uh, then we went. Then we, that was when he was like, "I'm done," so we're gonna go back. We moved to Cranbrook, and I basically grew up there. A lot of a lot of hockey players, and it was cool because like that senior league was really good and they back then you'd go play for the team and they'd have like a side job for you so mm -hmm. there was yeah. this, it, that back then it was Dairyland it was or Noka it was actually Noka Dairies was the name of the was the company and like the Do, Donnie Murdoch Bobby Murdoch all those guys they all came back they all played like they're all Royals like that was the Cranbrook Royals back in the day they wound up winning uh, the national or the national championship yeah. uh, I forget the name of the cup now but uh, yeah so it was kind of one of those things like the uh, I believe Ken, there's a local guy here. His parents, Kenny Carroll, his dad. Yeah, was yeah. Like, the other day, lives in the like, Shreveport now. Yeah, and he's like, and he's like, there. Dad. He's yeah. like, he goes, Dude, I saw this picture. He goes, My, I think my dad was on that team. Like yeah. my dad played against him. So anytime that we're going to play somewhere, alumni things like that, I'm call Kenny. Yeah, Kenny can yeah. still call get Kenny between the pipe. Call, <laughs> call Kenny. Letter Kenny. Uh, how far is Kamloops from there? Kamloops was about six and a half, seven hours back in the day. Now it's a little quicker with the way the roads are. But it so was, would that have been like a local thing for? Is that how you ended up in Kamloops, junior wise? I wound up in Kamloops because my buddy Bob Motti was drafted the the Bantam draft, and he ha, he was going there, and I needed a ride to go to a camp. <laughs> yeah. So my dad was working, my mom was working, and I needed to go somewhere. So I had a couple of invites, but I, I wasn't drafted. I was a young, I was a real little guy at yeah. fourteen. Uh, I kind of had my growth spurt my 15, 16 year old year, and uh, my buddy Bobby, he was going to he was going to Kamloops, and I was like, oh, I'll give it a shot, and jumped in the truck with him, and uh, we went up there for the camp, and then they were like, hey, we're gonna keep. Did you they around. know you were coming? Yeah, they yeah. like they send you the letter, but yeah. it, so and I, but I actually said I was gonna go to like Brandon is where I actually wanted to go, the Brandon Wheat Kings, um, because my dad was a Saskatchewan boy and it kind of had ties to Estevan and I had a Wheat King sweater, an Estevan Bruins sweater from yeah. growing up. and So I kind of wanted to go that way, but they're like, well, you know, Bob's going to Kamloops, it's only up the road here, it'd be kind of nice for you to go head that way. That's what I wound up in Kamloops. I had a good camp and then I got, I got listed at camp and when I got listed, I wound up staying a little longer and my mom would come up and I was like, I didn't know what was going on. My mom came, stayed with me for a little bit and then they're like, hey, you're you know, a decent little player and we're gonna keep an eye on you and see how things go. Throughout that year, just I, I grew, mm -hmm. and it was just time to for payback. <laughs> well, it had to be a good place to land because you won a couple more. Oh, it's beautiful. There. And you you have to like a lot of people that are going to be listening to this, except they're in Canada. Explain what the Memorial Cup is and how it comes about. I mean, I yeah. I know that there's always a host team, right? Yeah. But. Explain how big that is when it comes to Canadian hockey. Yeah, so there's three basic hockey. leagues. There's Western Hockey League, which is so like provinces and states. So you got your BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, Manitoba. That's one league. That's Western Hockey League. So and then what you do is you have to win that first. So there you you win your division, then you win your semi, then you win the Western Hockey mm -hmm. League. The same thing's going on in Ontario. So all the teams in around the Toronto area. Couple in the states, Detroit had a little a couple down in the in that area, and that that then if you win that one, you go to the tournament, and then if you're in the Quebec Maritimes, that's the QMJHL, the Quebec Major Junior. If you win that one, those three teams are the champions, and then what it does is the tournament rotates every year. So it'll be like in the west, it's in the middle, it's on the east, west, middle, east. It just keeps going like this. Whatever city that lands in, you get to host it. So we are actually, when I played in Kamloops, we had an incredible group of people, don't get me wrong. Like I, I will straight up say, they ranked us as the number two team ever. Yeah. No, we'll, we'll argue that to, to the day we die, because we, 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 were, we were tough too. Yeah. And uh, so this team, we had Jerome McGinley, uh, Shane Doan, Darcy Tucker, 
myself, Jason Strudwick, uh, Nolan Baumgartner, Steve Passmore, Randy Patruck, Rod Branch, like these guys were just, uh, they had sought this team to win it in 1995 because that's the year we were going to host the cup. I was going to say, that it, because a lot of the yeah. junior teams, when you're hosting it, you make a lot of moves and a lot of trades like the year You'll before. You'll give up the year, years for you that. Get, because Correct. you need yeah. to win, or you want to win yeah. when you're having it at There was home. a new building. They had just moved out of the old building. Which you could was, be the worst team in the league, but you're hosting it. You're still in the yeah. tournament, right? They had a history of still being pretty competitive. Yeah. Like they, they actually went to the final and won it in 92. And then in 93 was their off year, the rebuild year, yeah. to get back. So 93, 94. And then 95, we were going to kill it. Yeah. 93 had a great year again. 94... We actually upset Portland. In Portland, it was one of those ones where we kind of looked at each other like, what is going on? And sure. then from then, it was just one of those Cinderella things. We had a great coaching staff that was like, yeah, be lucky to be here, but enjoy it. And But you deserve to be here too type thing, guys. So it was Don yeah. Hay was our coach. Oh, yeah. Bob Brown was our, uh, was our, was our GM. And honestly, it was one of the coolest things because they they're, they are, they're big Hockey Canada guys. And now after, like later on, when you go through the clinics and stuff, you're like, man, like these guys obviously wrote the program mm -hmm. or were indoctrined by this thing because sure. that's how we lived we lived it was you know like enjoy, we, before every game we, we we dedicated the game to somebody else at home yeah. and we wrote it on a on a, on a stick and we said we're going to play for somebody yeah. else like it was all those pulling those things to just concentrate concentrate and focus to, to to get rid of those nerves and jitters but by the time the puck dropped like right before we were on the ice chris murray tell a joke and Chris Murray would tell a joke. Our tough guy. Yeah. He would tell yeah. a joke and lighten up the whole load and then sure. go out there. And one of the greatest junior fights i ever seen was him and, uh, Mc, I think it's McLean. Oh, dude, the guy had this mohawk and he was just a <laughs> killer. And uh, from the OHL, I forget what, now I forget, forget what the teams were, but man, these two, they I swear they both knocked each other out and knocked each other back in uh -huh. in the fight. It was awesome. And yeah, like, it, after it, they both gave each other a little nod. Like, that the, was the, awesome. The fights in junior hockey in Canada are legendary, aren't oh, they? Oh, my god! I gosh. mean, it's just... It, it, people don't understand. You you have to watch this and yeah. And like they groom some of these kids from the day that they were they come out of the womb to be to be these. That's animals. all they do. Yeah. Yeah. So NHL, which we all we all here, think here. that that's the. You need another cocktail. Yeah. yeah. This is yeah. such with Lutz. Have one more. <laughs> um, the so the NHL. We, we call it the heart of the trophy, right light on best there, trophy. I know, we got to put some tape. Remember in the sticks when they weren't sponsored? Yeah, we need to put some it. tape on here. Miller yeah, so Light, we we'll spell it wrong we're drinking. until it gets um, spelt right. To win the Stanley Cup, you play four rounds, seven games, 28 games max, right? Yep. Memorial Cup. With all yep. that, what, what's the bottom line if you want to get there? Well, how many games least most? Oh, it's pretty cool because it's on the inside of our rings. Yeah. Our record was, I know the one year was 72 wins. 10 losses and 10 ties. We still had ties back then. Yeah. We went into overtime when we were a shootout. We would have won. We yeah. Won. <laughs> okay. You would have been sitting on the bench right yeah, there, right? Yeah. 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 And I believe it was very similar the next year. I mean, it was, we, we, you start in, same thing though. You start Labor Day, camp starting yeah. right now, Western Hockey League. Uh, you know, there's some kids from Texas driving up north right now to go play in the Western Hockey League, mm -hmm. and their camp's starting right now. And then Memorial Cup weekend is during the Memorial. It, that's what it yeah. is. So during the Memorial Cup, so you're playing that whole time. You get a couple of weeks off for Christmas. The best players don't. They have to go play World Juniors, and uh, yeah, it's 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 a haul. It's it's I, I, it's, it's a it's a completely different world than the college it, world. It, it's it, well incredible, it really and that's is. where I was just going to go. I like I, it's funny again. Another similarity is like you didn't really have a place to go. Nobody was knocking your door down as a young kid to go there. You go there, it works out like that. I had no place to go. I drove to Grand Forks, North Dakota. Right. Went to college there. I had a coach that played there one time. Said, "Hey, I'd like to have this kid come here." I walk onto the team. We end up winning two national championships. Next thing you know, we get drafted. Your draft is a little crazy for me. When I when I saw you were drafted by the Islanders, it's wild. But but you didn't play for the Islanders until two or three teams later. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So tell tell me about the draft and how that whole thing went down. <laughs> I'll just say this, my, this whole, was, my whole experience with the Islanders was crazy, dude. Uh, like the whole thing, man. And you you played there. You played there during like it was pretty decent still, yeah. you know. Like, and then when I was you know when I was drafted, it was pretty cool. I actually had my tonsils out. I was I, It was because what year in junior were you drafted? Ninety four. Was that your and first that's the year, year? That was the year we won. It was my first year. I was a seventeen okay. year old, and that's the year that we kind of surprised everybody. Went to uh, Laval, Quebec, and won the Memorial Cup. Yeah. We were the team that were supposed to go 0 and 4. You guys are next year. Yeah, and we went in and won. And I got a and I played really good. And 
you're obviously because that, that's why you want to be. That's what. That's why you. That's play, the show. That's yeah. the showcase. Yeah. Like you, you're up against the best. That's yeah. why. Those, that's who's there. And uh, sorry. Uh, there's concussions. Oh, there you get go. There. We'll get you there. got one. <laughs> um, so you get drafted. Yeah. So I got drafted. And in '94, um, <laughs> I thought I was going to sixth round. I didn't go to the draft. And I just got graduated high school a couple of days before. We just had the Memorial Cup. And I remember I got my tonsils out. And it was draft day, Friday night, first round. No, oh, you're not a first rounder, Brad. Surprise, surprise. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, well, it should be sometime tomorrow around noon. Hopefully, we'll get a call. And at like 8.30 in the morning, my mom comes ripping downstairs and she hammers the door open. She's like, get up, get up, get up. And I got no, I don't have a voice because I don't have tonsils. I'm like two days out of not having tonsils. And I can't talk, haven't eaten, I'm miserable. So I jump up, I run upstairs and I grab the phone, the home phone. And yeah, it I'm wasn't like, your cell phone. Right? So the, <laughs> the cord. God. And I'm like, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> Hello? Yeah, or don't even say hello. I just got on the phone, and it's uh, Lauren Hanning. And oh, he yeah. goes, uh, he was uh, played with my dad, so it was really cool. Okay. You know, I got the call from Lauren, and uh, and uh, he goes, uh, he goes, Brad, it's Lauren Henning from the New York On. Just want to let you know, you know, you got drafted, and uh, it's fourth round. You went 90th overall. And are you there? Like, I know you got your tonsils out, but like. Grunt or something. Up, sure? I go, yeah. Ugh. Goes, All right, put your dad back on. Jeez, go back to bed. So I gave it back to my dad, and I literally just turned around and went back to bed. I was just like, it was like, ugh. So then, uh, but you know how they do the development camps right after, right? Okay. So they fly me in seven days later. I am 145 pounds, like soaking wet. You should. I still got the pictures, and I. So I fly in all the way to New York. I am like, just look terrible. I haven't eaten probably in 10 days now. I'm eating, I'm, I got jello and I can kind of like whisper a little bit. So I open the door and there's Todd Bertuzzi, who is like a, <laughs> yeah. a man child. Yeah, looked like he just came out of the woods yeah. looking for some food. Brett Lindros. And I'm yeah. just like, oh geez. Like, yeah. And he doesn't have a shirt on. I remember he's sitting there and he's like, and I walk in and you know, like back in the day when the Euros used to come, they didn't talk. Right. So I come in and I don't talk. So they think I'm a Euro. And they're talking and saying there's, and I'm just like, kind of, I'm like pointing to my neck, like this, oh, he's, oh, he can't, he can't speak. Okay. okay. Uh-huh. So I just put my bag down, just kind of hung out. And about two days later, I just started talking. And they're like, uh-huh. Brian McCabe and those guys, like, no, dude, the guy's totally played for Cambridge. Yeah. Like, he's like, he's totally, he's, from, yeah. no, you, you can totally speak. And I started to be able to get it. But I put my, the first day, we had to do 145 pounds as many times as you could, and I almost died. Like it almost mm-hmm. went and it went right through my chest. So you get all three of them up. So my first like experience with the Islanders, where yeah. they're, they're like, "Who is this like weakling little wow mistake sure. th- mistake that we had?" Long story short, we went to camp in Kitchener, the lockout. Yeah. Right then, had a decent camp, and they signed. They also drafted two other Camus Blazers, Jason Hall in the second round. Uh, Strudwick in the third round and me in the fourth round. So all guys from Kamloops, all to the Islanders, those two guys signed, they send me home. I'm like, great. But they were like, hey, we can sign this. Year. I'm like, now nah, I'll go back and have a good year. Had a great year. At the end, I had like 45 points or something. Had a couple more points than those two guys had already signed. So now I got a little yeah. leverage. You're feeling good about yourself. Doing this one. Yeah. And they came in and they just go, nope. <laughs> 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 You're a fourth rounder. This is fourth round money. This is what you get. And back then you could re enter the draft. So I just said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to re enter the draft. Um, but there was this contingency thing that they, you could do where you could they, they could offer you to other teams. And yep. if you yeah. got taken, yep. then you would be the, same, the equivalent of that pick. So. Yeah. I went to Dallas. I signed a deal with Dallas. The Islanders got a fourth round pick basically in that draft. That's how I got traded. And I wound up signing with, uh, with Dallas and I was in Kelowna a couple of weeks later with uh, JJ McQueen learning how to run with holding on to strings uh-huh. and doing all the weird stuff that he did. Yeah. But, but he was a Kamloops Blazer guy. So I knew yeah. him. He's a familiar face. Les Jackson was there. That was the first thing I ever did. Razor. Daryl Ray. Daryl Ray. He was there at one was point. Like, it, was, it really was. It was really familiar Razor's for me. Razor's got that tattooed on his ass, I think, that Kamloops logo, right? Oh, oh, oh. oh you do too? I haven't seen it. Oh, dude. No, I don't have no. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't seen it either, but I'm sure he does somewhere. Probably. But that was it. Yeah, that's that was my Islanders thing. And then come full circle, it was years later... 
after another lockout and I was looking for a team and I they like they called me on like my birthday. I thought I was done. And yeah. they like called I was like, Hey listen, we're looking for a veteran guy to come in. You wanna come in? I was like, Sure, I'll come in and play. I'm like, sure. What do you want? I'm like, well, I don't, this is what I made last year. It's like, okay, well, we'll sign you that. Okay. I'm signed easy, a two-year deal. And yeah, went in and got her done, and I was only there for six months. It was the ownership. But you came in, was, you got a Stanley Cup ring. Yeah, right. You come in, you you, you probably didn't. That was your first year, right? Dallas, when when we won the cup, you got well, oh, how many games yeah. did you played? 10, 15 games that year or something maybe, like that? Maybe, yeah. maybe, yeah. Yeah, so you get your feet wet there. Yeah. I, I always tell everybody I had the greatest front row seats to learn how to win. It really yeah. was. Yeah. I was surrounded by winners. Well, on and off the ice, really. Seriously. So from that team, like what what stands out to you in that? And again, you know, I was going to ask you this later, but because I always find that guys that have won, well, I should say, guys like us, and you look at you go back, and I didn't even realize it till probably, I don't know, five, six, ten years ago. And I just kind of saw somebody showed me the roster of the 99 team. And there were five Hall of Famers on there, right? And then, then I went back and I went back, oh, well, shit, I wonder what it was like that in Montreal, too. And I'm looking at, you know, you got Chelios and Robinson. You know, and so you just name all these guys. And you're like, that's why we won, right? And so I looked at, I looked at the Dallas team the year that we won. And then and we'll, we'll get to Tampa here in a second. And so then you end up winning the cup in Tampa again mm-hmm. when you go there. But the names didn't match for me because I was saying you know, Madano and, and Hull and Neuendijk and Letton and, and Zubov and Eddie Belfour. And then I looked at the team in Tampa and I saw uh, <laughs> Marty St. Louis, Le Cavalier. Yeah. But to me, there was a common denominator without the superstars, but they are super, was the goaltending. It was Javi yeah. Bulin yeah. and Belfour. And I thought, you yeah. know, not, Eddie probably had more support from those other guys. But so what, yeah. what stands out to you, first off, from that, from that Dallas team? Like, uh, I got a couple. Uh, number one is the, the actual being a team. Like, I, I, like the, it was more the off-ice stuff that, again, like the, you, you remember the little lessons and stuff that you get taught along the way. Um, but how you, th- that team, we, we, like, we just did anything for each other. I, I can remember... We were as close off the ice as we were on the ice. I, I, incredibly close. Mm-hmm. Like, that's what I tell guys. And you can tell when you're on a team, you're like, man, I got a good feeling about this team. And then I, and I've been on those teams and you kind of look like, dude, I have not, I've never even hung out with four of the guys right. on this team. How do you have a good yeah. team? How, what's this guy like? And we go, oh, I mean, he's a good dude. Like, oh, we should hang out sometime. That team was, we used to say, remember, it's the Harvey Hotel. I think it's a Weston now. Yeah. And yeah. I remember getting the call to going the Big Apple and the D-man were coming to pick me up. And I remember it was Hatch and Maddie, and he had a Jaguar. <laughs> and I was, they shoved me in that little back seat thing. Yeah, <laughs> I was like yeah. sitting in that back seat, and we were just whizzing through the, the Dallas Fort Worth, the, the, the tolls. Airport. You had to yeah. pull over and put the, the money in. And we whipped through there, and we pull into there, and you were there. And it was probably over. a Monday night. It was a Monday night. Monday night. Guaranteed, it was yeah. a Monday yeah. night. I didn't know it was. And I, I remember the whole night, and I yeah. was because I got to be a judge that night. See, we didn't do a very good job if you remember the whole night. Typically, you wake up in the morning and go, what the fuck just happened there? Well, that's but you coming. remember it all. So you well, were a young kid and a no, rookie. that's you're... coming. Oh, okay, that's, that's coming. coming. Did we go to Vinny's after or no? No, oh, okay. I only made it to like 10.30. <laughs> <laughs> I was home by curfew. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, they picked me up. Which, Because crazy enough, my roommate was Peter Buzak, but he didn't get the call. And I was like, this is kind of strange that you guys didn't ask this kid. I, oh, yeah, all right, so uh, yeah. I'll go. So I went out and... I remember hanging out with the guys, and I'm I'm gonna be a judge that night. So I get to, I'm getting peppered with shots and having a great time. And I think Mo is there. And oh, that's an odd one. Yeah, and that's that's but that was, it was that, hard getting that's Mo the, to come out. But there. that's the part of the whole story is that I looked over and I was like, these guys are like, these guys are always together. Yeah, this is really cool. That's Mike Madonna. Just like, in case nobody knows, there's a bikini contest that used to go on at the Big <laughs> Apple every Monday night, and the Big Apple Cafe. Joe Gallant, the owner. I mean, it, it was it was gold. And just oh, so you know, my awesome. first when I got to Dallas, I um, you know we're new. We get here in what was it ninety four, and I was living in Bedford, and so I wasn't too far from from the Apple. And one day I was getting gas at the Seven Eleven next door. I was just out after practice driving around. I was the guy that when you typically live by the airport, you live by the rink. Right. You know when guys yep. come in. I never wanted to deliver. Everybody else did. I yeah. always thought to myself, yeah, I man, I see these guys for you know on the road right. trip. And say, I don't want to walk up my door and see them tomorrow morning too. Right. So everybody lived. You know, by Valley Ranch, I yeah. went and moved out. I was at the airport out there. And anyway, I and I'm like, <clears throat> one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm like, what's this little pizza place over here? It looks like a little hole in the wall and a little strip mall. Walk in there. Joe's the only guy, the owner, and 
we just start talking. He's got that New York accent, and he kind of, who are you? Where are you from? Why are you here? Oh, yeah, I'm from New York. We start chatting. He goes, you got to come back tonight. And I'm like, <laughs> Monday. And I'm looking around. There ain't shitting. There ain't nothing. Why would I come back here? So anyways, he goes, no, trust me, come back. So I come back, and I, I get in there about 10, 10, 30 at night. And I'm like, like, I looked. I did, did I come in the right door? Like, this place is slammed. And at the time, all of the contestants were basically the, the young ladies from around the best spots in Dallas. And so, as you know, it was incredible. I kept that quiet for about two months. And I'm like, this is my spot. I ain't telling any of these dudes here on this team. <laughs> and I made the mistake of telling the one guy yep. that broadcasts everything, and that's Matt Pachuk. And next thing you know, Maddie. the whole room yeah. is that guy. So, <clears throat> anyway, kudos to Joe. And that's kind of where we all, that was our spot. It's a bit know? of a, yeah, and, and then... It was one of those ones where, you know, so we, it was, I went out, had a good time. I remember getting sent home early because Mo was like, hey, you know, we got to practice tomorrow, right? You know what these guys are doing to you, right? I'm like, uh, <laughs> what? They're like, you need to be more, like, you need to go home. Yeah. And don't hang with those three guys. Like, those guys don't have to be there. Yeah. So I was like, all right. So I did. I went home. I jumped in a cab and I went home. And I remember getting, opening the door and Buzak just laughing. He's like, oh, 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 you're so dead tomorrow. Yeah. I was like, oh. So I remember I went to bed, but then it was the next day that was the most important. The next day was in line. I was bad, but you guys would hide me in line. You guys, I would get in line. Yeah. Like, hey, Luco, just, hey, get behind me, dude. You're, yeah. You're, yeah. Don't be a drill killer. Don't be, don't, you're, don't be a drill killer, dude. Yeah. Just, you're at the very end of the line, and, it, and honestly, like, just stay out of the way once in a while. Yeah. Had the Vicks Vapor Rub. You guys gave me all that one. Yeah. And, Explain uh, why the vapor rub. Yeah, well, people don't it, know yeah, about vapor rub. Vapor rub, basically, you put it on your chest when you start to sweat. It covers up the smell, <laughs> so we think. <laughs> but then you just know that guy that smells like vapor rub and beer, and then, uh, but then the Cowboys Cafe. That was that was the biggest one for me. Is that afterwards, uh, Carbo was like, "Hey, uh, after we're all going for lunch, and we all went in, and the whole team is there, not missing one guy. The whole yeah. team lined up on the bar." eating their salad, getting all their food back in. I'm drinking some beers and I went up there and I, I don't know if it was you or something. I, well, I'll just take a Coke. And the guy kind of looked around, I think it was Buck. He looks around, he kind of looks at you guys and you're like- You with them? <laughs> you, no, you went, uh, hey, we don't trust anyone that doesn't drink beer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bye -bye. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, and that was it. I, and that was it. It was on, and the guys all kind of turned around. They started the golden tea. They played, and I was part of the crew. And I, I was like, that's when I, I felt welcome. And then it was more of that. It was like you guys were. It was so. It was such a welcoming group. And then when it got to tough parts of the game, it goes right back to the original. Was I remember sitting in the room and had the confidence and the feeling of like looking around. I think I was panicking a little bit. We were like, man, we were down, but it's close to the end of the, it might've been playoffs or maybe the overtimes. It might've been the overtimes, but we're sitting there and it was, it was Mike Keen, And he just goes, he goes, hey, chill, man. We yeah. got this. Yeah. We got this. Yeah. Listen, we all know how to do the same thing over and over exactly. again. Rinse and They're going to break. Yeah. And when they do, yeah. that's what they're for. And he pointed over at, the guys like yeah. Holly, Mo, yeah. and Zuby, you know, those right. guys that were sitting over in the corner with their little talking, you know, like yeah. how they would, like, you know, hey, we're going to go out and do this one shift and we're, and we're probably going to score a goal. That's the, it was amazing. That's the brilliance of, to me. And everybody talks about Scotty Bowman, one of the legends, right, of the game. Bob Ganey is my Scotty Bowman. And I played with Ganey, obviously, but was captain in Montreal. But right. to go back to that, and you, you just mentioned Keener and Scrudlin and Carbo. And what Bo did at the time is he saw this team getting closer and closer. He started bringing in those pieces that he was the leader of in Montreal for years and years and years right. and just saw how it operated. And we became robots. And then he brought yeah. in a guy like Hitchcock that drilled things in. And so and what Keener was saying is, relax, man. Like, we got this because we did the same drills over and over again. We're like, why are we? Because when the game, it became automatic. You didn't have to think anymore. There was no panic. And you didn't, have, you didn't even have to worry about trusting that guy. You do your thing, he'll do his thing. And I remember that we would, we, and it's kind of what training camps were when you first got there. When I first got there, it was different then. But then I started doing it now with our, our U18 guys when we can get out of town and have a little training camp, right? And what you see is you'll see little clicks. You'll see like two, three kids walking around. Then there's a group of four and there's a group of five. Sweet. And then you kind of get with them. And then by the time day three is, now when they're walking to lunch downtown, you're seeing 12, 14 guys going together. And that's what, that's what our teams were. They were like Great. this. They were close like that off the ice. And that to me, that 
that's why I say that was a brilliance when you, you talk about that. And Bo brought in those kind of guys, you know, into Dallas that had won Stanley Cups, but were kind of groomed and it was programmed that way. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's carried on. <clears throat> I always go back to the saying, you know, up in the wall in there in Montreal, and it, it's in French and now it's in both. I mean, from mm-hmm. these failing hands, we, and we pass the torch. Pass the torch to be, yeah. yeah to, you know, that kind of thing. And so that's, you, you learn to hand it down to the younger guys and that becomes your responsibility after a few years. So, so anyway, then we, you know, we, we kind of get get the job done. And I can, to this day, I can remember watching you play. You, you move on to Tampa Bay. I can remember watching you play and going, you were part of the four. There were the four guys. You were integral in, in winning that Stanley Cup in Tampa because that's why I said, I don't see a lot of big names, a lot of game changers. I don't know how you felt about that team at that time, but it seemed like that machine that was like, we're just going to wear you down. We're going to find ways to win. But I kept on, t- when I was talking to the guys back here in Dallas, I'm like, Luke, look at what Luke, like watch Luke play because you were part like matching lines. You know, he's going against top guys. You know, he's not that young guy that was here. How many years were you here before you went to Tampa? Three but, I, but really, the one year I was playing forward yeah. and D, remember? Yeah, I know. That, but the, the, what you picked up on in a couple years yeah. and got programmed in, that's why teams want guys like you and like Keener and Screwy and all those guys like that. So talk about that Tampa team, winning the Stanley Cup there. You had to feel like a huge part of that. Yeah, well, first I got traded on my wedding day, so that was always oh, fun. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, right? <laughs> so that, that whole thing was a beauty. Um and then, it, but it was right from then. It was Torts called. He goes, "Hey, listen." He goes, uh, "I heard you just, that day." He goes, uh, "You just get you enjoy your wedding day. You got your honeymoon coming up, and then you got to get ready." I was like, "Okay," because I'm gonna push you. Yeah. I was like, "All right, okay." Torts. He kind of cuts to the chase. And I was like, "All right, cool." Uh, hello. <laughs> that was it. I'm like, "Okay, well, that's him. That's Torts in a nutshell." So then we go, I work out for the rest of the summer, you know, and then I get to Tampa Bay and I realize that I was in zero shape compared to what this guy was going to hold the bar at. Yeah. And it was great because we go to the hotel, you have that meeting, you know, and I look around, I'm like, man, there's not a lot of guys here. Like, there's only like 30, 40 guys here. There's not even enough guys for the minors. Like, he's like, no, we didn't invite them. Like this guy's really serious. So they go through like this is the equipment guy. This is this guy. He gets the torts. Torts stands up. He goes, "I'm John Tortorella, head coach. I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to be your coach." And he sits down. <laughs> and he looks at Feaster and goes, "Oh, I'm done." Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. "Wow, this yeah. is really different. Yeah, a little like, general, this is a really town. different now." Yeah. 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 And then it went through, and that's how it started. So then Camp Tortorella began and that all he's doing it's military style boot camp of he is trying to weed out the weak and you didn't know it at the time you don't like you you look it it took months for us to kind of actually sit around and talk about it and go like i I think i know what he's doing man Mm -hmm. and what he did was he so for one we we only carried 20 players there there was no extra guys 21 we had another guy that would play forward in d if we someone got hurt darren rumble he played both forward and back. He was an older guy that had had been a one of those guys that had been a five six on team, so he could play that role. He could play ten minutes if he had to. He could play twenty if he had to. Um, not at the end of the season, you couldn't <laughs> say you missed the gym a little bit by the end of their rums. But and uh, but he was our guy. And really, what Torts would do is he he. But I, we we figured it out. He pushed every guy during the season, and what he was kind of, what he was doing is he was building that 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 team, that, that band of brothers. Yeah. He was seeing who was gonna come and who's gonna stand up for to him in the room. He'd attack guys in the room. He, he, I remember the one time his nose was like touching mine. He's like, I read an article once. It said you'd play in Alaska. Well, I know people in Alaska and his nose is right here. And like three or four guys jumped up like, hey, torts, it's enough, Yeah. out. Yeah. And they would kick him out of the room. And it would happen every now and then during the season. And it wasn't your, the guys that you actually think it would be. Right. It was different guys. Yeah. So we actually wound up having a team of Kirk Mullers and Scroodlins on our group, but it was just a different way of doing it. Like the Nolan Pratts, you know, that has now won a Stanley Cup as a coach with Colorado. These guys just learned to first come together as a team. That mm-hmm. was number one. And then the repetitiveness of doing the same thing over and over again. We did the same practices every single day. We broke out the same way every day and that's all it became, muscle memory. And we just, but we were in such good shape 
we wore teams down. Yep. We loved doing it. Yep. I say, like, if you go in the fighter world, we were kind of like GSP. He was more of a counter puncher. He would just we, make you so mad and just hit you with a jab the yep. whole fight if he yeah, could. Frustrate you. That's frustrate yeah. you. Dump it in and dump yep. and chase and pound you over yep. and over again with guys like Andre. That boring Wall. hockey that everybody used to talk about. That boring hockey that championship wins games. Hockey. It's called championship yep. hockey. Exactly. Yep. And. Uh, that's basically how it, like, it started going. And then, you know, like we started doing pretty good. And about halfway through, teams started getting a little onto us, you know, mm-hmm. like well, these guys sit back a little bit. Dan Boyle, Marty St. Louis, Brad Richards, guys like that stood up and went in there and said, Torts, we want to play a little different tonight. Mm-hmm. We want to go that way. A- and he listened. He goes, you know what? You guys are ready. Right then... When he did that, he gained the confidence of all of us that he was with us, not against us, and he like completely changed the dynamic of the game. He yeah. was amazing. You could feel it. We, I think we spanked him like 6-1. We actually went out with the guys. We had a back-to-back, I think, with him. Yeah. We went out with it like Talbot that night. He's like, yeah. oh, my gosh, dude. I was minus four in the first period. That was terrible. <laughs> you know, one of those ones. But uh, you're like, what happened? You guys completely changed your game. Yeah. So then we went, wow, we can we can play a, a, an offensive type of game. And we and so, then at, so then at playoff, once we needed a little – little something at the uh, trade deadline greatest kind of scary moment for me was we were in Pittsburgh that's where it was and we're sitting there and we had lunch and you know it's that day everybody's we do have cell phones now but we're sitting around and everyone's kind of sitting no one really talks at breakfast we have till noon we had our meeting and the management all came down and said guys we're not even going to have a meeting today you know it's a tough day for everybody Um, go get your nap but stay we don't want anyone leaving the hotel so we're like, oh, we're making a move. Mm-hmm. And we all go up, we eat, we come back, and my phone rings. And my roommate's Dan Boyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he looks over at me, he goes, it ain't for me. <laughs> I'm like, thanks, Danny yeah, boy, I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So I pick up the phone, I'm like, oh, I'm like, hello, I'm like, Luco, yeah, come on down. I'm like, oh, man. Uh-huh. So I go down to the meal room, and I'm sitting there, and they go, all right, bud, so you've won, you've been on a few teams now, and we're, we're gonna make a trade. And I'm just like, son of a gun. So we're talking to, t- to a team right now, and there's, a, there's two players on the same team, but we we're going to kind of see which way we, we need to go. Uh, if you could bring one thing into this team, and you know how we are, like, are they worth it? So they're both Blazers. Oh, yeah. What would you do? And I was like, well, one was Tyson Nash for added grit up front. Yep. And the other guy was Daryl Sador. And I went, Sid. I, and I said, nothing against Tyson Nash at all. I freaking love him. And yeah, yeah. both. Honestly, yeah. both. Sure. But you can't have enough defensemen. And I said, you don't understand Daryl Sador's like, yeah. mindset of what it takes to win. The guy, that's what he does. Like He's just infatuated yeah. with winning. He was my roommate you there. Tie, you, we had to pull Sid back. Literally, you have yeah. to stop this yeah. guy from, yeah. like, break, he's broken bones. You're yeah. like, you, you're bro- your leg is falling off, dude. Yeah. Go get a, go yeah. get a Band-Aid. Yeah. And he would still jump in front of another bullet. You know, so that, so they're like, okay, well, I had a, and I had a bonus that year yeah. for top four. And I was in the four spot. Yeah. And they're like, well, you know what that's going to do to your bonus? I'm like, I don't care. I, 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 let's, let's go. Get him, yeah. get him in here. Yeah. And they said, all right. And they actually picked up the phone. They went like this. So here you go, dude. Pick the phone. I go, Sid. Yeah. Hey, dude, you got a no trade clause, right? Yeah. You want to come to Tampa? Yep. Yeah. All right. Cool. He goes, as long as I'm your roommate. I'm like, oh, okay, because he snores terribly. <laughs> <laughs> so so he came in. He was my roommate for about a week, and I had to go complain. And I'm yeah. like, no, I, dude, I'm not enough anymore. I think he wound up with Chris Dingman after that. <laughs> but he came in, and he did exactly what we what we, what we we needed. Yeah. And it, and it come, I, I, I really go back to the one meeting all year as in New York. We were, we were tied 1-1. We lost, I think, the first game. We won the second game with a kind of a crappy goal. Um, we should have been down two nothing. We went in and we were at the Garden City Hotel, and we, it was our morning skate meeting. We're, we're in there, and we bring everybody in. And Torts up there. He's got his glasses on. He's got his big thing. He's gonna go through the video and you know t- tell us about everything. We're, we're this is our pregame. Like this is this is literally our big moment to for game three. And said just went, hey Sack, uh, John, can I take a minute? And he got up and just stood there and, and poured his heart out to all the guys. And you looked around the room and you could just see it. Everybody, everybody, it just changed. The feeling, mm-hmm. it just changed. You're like, this is it. There's guys that beg to play for teams like this. You guys don't know how good we are. 
he just pumped our tires and Torres just said, and he go, and then Torres got up. He goes, we're good. Yeah. And that was it. And really, that was that, that was to me it was like it was just we played for each other so much. It reminded me of the Dallas situation, but it actually reminds you of every team you play for. And you look back, and you're like, man, well, that's why we won in Kamloops. I would have done anything. I still to mm-hmm. this day for uh, Jerome McGinley and the and, yeah. the and the Dones of the world. Those guys call me up right now. Rod Branch, for, you know, other guys that don't have the Hall of Fame status, like those guys that are our goalies from back in the day. Those guys call you. You'd be there in a, a second when you win. You live in a little little yeah. different bubble. So, so you experienced the Stanley Cup parade in Dallas. Yeah. You had one in Tampa. <laughs> yeah. How do you look at them two? Remember where we're sitting. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> okay, so Dallas. Not just the parade. I love the Dallas bump. story. Yeah. Because my brother is part of it. Kind of. Okay. <laughs> well, the the house where we're for so the first. It's actually one of the only nights I, I, I mornings I, I think I've ever seen you get sick, dude. It was the morning after Vinny's. You're, well, I got on and you were holding you were holding like an ice bucket this way. Well, bag. okay. Truth be told, probably had beers in it and then had. It was about between four and five a.m. You had um, enough. You tapped out. I was at <laughs> no. I I I got tapped on. I tap tap. I got tapped on the shoulder, and I had somebody tapping me on my left shoulder. And all I heard is, "Sir, you can't sleep here." I was in a Burger King. Oh no! Passed out with a breakfast sandwich or something like that in no. front of me. And out. <laughs> and so I, they woke me up. And the parade, I think we had to be at the Star Center like 10 early. in the morning, 9 yeah. or 10 in the morning. Well, my parents came into town for that. Well, I didn't quite get there in time to get my parents there. So when I got to the rink, both buses were loaded. All the parents and family on one bus and all this thing on the other one. And I was still pulling in. And so that was a bit of a, an embarrassing moment. And so, yeah, I, I was not doing well. And that was one of my, that was a Vinny thing, though. That, that, I blame that all on him. We all can on that one. That, yeah. was, that was straight up because it was going good at the Big Apple. <laughs> oh, it was, Everything it was, was great. Good. But the team was smart because they had those limos for us. Yeah. So they would, but my brother was back at, who was only 16 at the time, uh-huh. was back at the River Chase apartments, like just doing nothing. And Maddie's like, are you kidding me right now? Like, this is our night to party with the Stanley Cup, and you, and you left your brother at home? Sends a limo to my to the, to the apartment, picks up my brother, comes back to the Big Apple. And so I know that conversation's happening. So how I find out he's there is I turn over and look, and he's doing a freaking belly flop off the bar into the <laughs> ice tub. Oh, yeah. So Maddie talked him into that one. So then I'm like, oh, we got to change. So Vinny's like, oh, don't worry. We'll go to our house right on the corner. We're gonna, that's where everyone's going to go there. We did the big party. You know, every, My brother and Sevy are the guys that had to push the cup. They would swim down, and they like push the cup up like yep. five feet, and because yeah. it wound up. I don't know how it wound up in there, but so, uh, there's, there's, weird, there's, there's, a, a there's some bad rumors about that. <laughs> so Tampa Bay Stanley Cup party. I In the last couple of years, Tampa Bay's got an incredible team. You yeah. know, they, they probably could have won a third one, but there was a pretty good team in Colorado that has yeah. something to say about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you see their parties. They all got the, the sea doos out there on the ocean and stuff like that. That's scary. Anything like when you were there? What did you guys do in Tampa? Nothing like that. Nothing. We weren't we weren't near, nearly as crazy as that. We were actually yeah. pretty pretty docile. We were just kind of hung out and we were pretty new to it. it. It was kind of funny, like straight up when we won it. I remember going in the dressing room and me and Sid went in the dressing room with the cup. We turned around and we're like, where, where is, is everybody? Where is everybody? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so we just so that put it down so on the you, floor, and we just sat there, and we went and opened the door and let everybody come in. And so you're saying we outdid them? At oh, least our that partying year. was yeah. epic compared to. I, I've when I was at the Hall of Fame thing for Chelios, I was at Chelios Hall of Fame thing, and I remember the one of the Cup guys came up to me, and he had told me this is a personal thing when because I when I had the, took the Cup home to Wisconsin, I had a little bit longer, and I wanted it to be there only because of a. <laughs> Mo didn't get it onto the Craig Kilborn show. Uh, somebody else didn't need it. And so I had it 4th of July weekend, and it ended up being too long. And I kind of was like, no. And I ended up taking it. I had a bar at the time, not a very good one. It was a biker bar, a little brother's <laughs> house. And so, um, <clears throat> anyway, that, that's another day. But so they were, they'd say, we got you in the top three. Oh, yeah. I said, the top three of what? All time parties that we've had, really, and like personally, and I'm like, well, that you must have some points. They said, no, dude, some of the things that we saw and did, especially at your biker bar, with a guy with a hook hanging and you know, hanging from the ceiling, and things. Like, he had a <laughs> hook for a hand. <clears throat> anyway, so um, okay, so you win a cup there, then then you start traveling. You get you finally get to the island. You yeah. Fi- you finally play in yeah. New York, and then but 
so war, war was after the island. Yeah, are you finished. Yeah, we Vancouver. went Tampa Island, Island, Jersey. Van, oh, Jersey. Love Jersey. You love Jersey. I love Jersey. Okay, so Lou Lamorello. Okay, unbelievable man. So then, well, that's right up your alley. That would be rep my playing right. for Lou and that right. those guys right. in that team. Right, kind of like, honored to play with those dudes. Yeah, Vancouver, close to home. How was Vancouver? That was just like a dream, right? Was it? It was, and it was kind of one. Of, I mean, I, I was a cap casualty to that, to that trade with yeah. uh, Heatley, you know, yeah, going Danny, and coming yeah. in, and, and Airhoff was basically who the, who Vancouver was getting. They <laughs> again, I was sitting in. Uh, San Jose <laughs> had a great year, I thought. Uh, came back up in the summer, really had a good year in the summer, really worked out hard, <laughs> looked great. Um, was in Subway and I'm looking at the TV and I looked at the bottom and it looked like I just got traded. Oh, like, no way. Don't, no, I don't need, no, no pickles, I'm out. No <laughs> I was like way. literally ordering my food. And I was like, oh, I just got traded. No idea, so I got my truck, uh, drove up to the top of the hill, told Kara, and grabbed my stuff, and drove back to the airport, and I was gone. And I pulled up to Vancouver, and they they were waiting for me. They're like, I'm like, oh, this is gonna go good. And so <laughs> they come back there, and it's uh, Vino, and uh, they're just like, you know, like we don't have a spot for you. You know, we have ten defensemen under NHL contract right now. Uh, unfortunately, you know, it's part of the thing with the Heatley yeah. move. You know. But we have three teams that are already interested in you, so we're gonna play you every exhibition game. Play good, and I'm like, frickin' right, yeah. let's do this. Put me in the lineup, played pretty good, um, and Dallas is one of the teams. Yeah. It was Dallas, Pittsburgh, and uh, I think we were in Boston. And I'm like, come on, Dallas, let's go. They're like, well, yeah. Dallas isn't interested in you playing for them though. And I was like, what? They're like, well, what about Austin? Sounds great. Let's go. I just want to play. At this point, I'm like, I just want to play. Yeah. I mean, I've been in San Jose what, now. Now I've been to Vancouver. 12, 13, 14. How many years you got in? Yeah, I'm like 14 years 14 in now. Years. I'm like, yeah. any, I'm like, yeah, I got maybe a couple of years left on, yeah. on my deal. Maybe, maybe in one year left even on my deal. I'm like, yeah, sure. Let's go down to Austin. My wife's from Texas. This is like Cinderella story. We're going back to Texas. Let's do it. Went down to Austin. Loved it down there. Treated us amazing. Had a pretty good season, but I got called up halfway through the year hurt my shoulder and that was it and then they they actually vancouver we lost to boston that year but well, i was in a sling i wasn't playing at, at do that you time. remember because hitchcock was coaching in dallas do you happen to remember right yeah oh, you remember me calling you you remember the phone call which i don't what, think you remember well you, the one you, i got in trouble and had to no, come to your house no 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 i called you and i i said listen luke i'm calling because uh hitch wants me to give you a call you were in austin that's right and that's and right. Uh, i said you know, we were talking about you, wanting to know if you wanted to come up, you know, that come is, here and you play. Are right, yeah. And I remember you telling me no. And you kind of, and I was like, what? And uh, he said, uh, so anyways, I, I told, I said, no, he's not interested. He goes, what the fuck? He's not in. I said, no. I said, I don't know, Hitch. You told me to call him. I asked him and he said no. And I was going, is it because he loved Austin too much or is it because he hated Hitch that much? And I said, probably a combination of both. <laughs> I said, but I have no idea. But you just loved it there. Were you coaching? Were you actually? It was more I wanted to stay in the like NHL. Like okay. that, That's what it was. It was like, ah, oh, but I want to I want to play. I think I could. St I knew what kind of summer I had just had. And I was like, man, like I need a, I need a play. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm good right now. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I went down to Austin and lit it up. Like literally felt, I, I, I really thought it was a good chance. But at the time, I was still under Vancouver contract. So I can't get called up to even Dallas. So I'm like, Ugh. Then the next year I was like, I'm in. Like when they, I was like, I'll, I'll definitely be back. I loved it there then. But mm -hmm. it was, that, that's why it was weird as I, I was on loan from Vancouver. Oh, okay. So it was the, I'll go down there, but if I play good, I got to go play for Vancouver now. Oh, that is a weird situation. Yeah. There. And then that, and that's what kind of what happened halfway through the season. And I was had, a, had like thirty points halfway through the season, that, and Vancouver called me up, and I just got, and I was like, ah, kind of my shoulder's a little sore. I'm like, I don't know about this. Yeah. I'm playing pretty hard right now. And then I went to Vancouver and I didn't play. I was there for like six weeks and I didn't play at all. And I'm like, did did you? What's the point? When, when you were in Austin, though, because my, I think my kids were there, at least one or two yeah. of them when you were yeah. there. Because they had said, well, Luke's kind of coaching this or, yeah. you know, helping coach. So yeah. it, was that someplace you wanted to go? Like, were you looking that after after party? You know what I mean? Yeah, you wanted... well, that was kind of the plan. But, you know, when new ownership came in, they yeah. kind of cut that yeah, plan. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, it was like, so I started there and I got hurt. Uh, it was actually that year with the Vancouver year. And I hurt my shoulder. And so Paul Gerard was our D coach. And Gully was the head guy. 
And when I got hurt, they're like, hey, you know, Vancouver, they actually, we, we asked for a release uh, mm -hmm. so I could actually coach and be on the ice with them. Yeah. Um, because I, I, I got called up to Vancouver. I was now under Vancouver again. Mm -hmm. And when I got sent down, they sent me to Manitoba. And I was like, I ain't going to Manitoba, mm -hmm. dude. My family lives in Texas, dude. Yeah. Can you please give me a release? So they actually did. They released me to coach. I went down there and I became the video guy. And I would just go, I'd watch the games and be like, but then we had the dream come true, uh, playoffs. Stars don't do well, and Mr. Ben comes in, and that was like the coolest thing ever. It was like yeah. kind of like a video game. You'd like you'd watch Jamie play, and you'd just be like, "All right, now how can I find open ice for this guy?" Yeah. And then we basically just did that, found a way for him, and we wound up in the Calder Cup final. Yeah. Yeah, it was yeah, it kinda, was awesome, it was, and I fell in love with it. I like I like the part of it of how like knowing that there's something that when you're done, like this yeah. is this is cool. Like it, I, I can do this. I I know I can be. I, I can I like the the time at the rink that you when you're coaching. I, yeah. I like the the one on one with the the players. Still, it's a different. It was a different world. I I, I loved it. I and thought it was going to be a chance, but unfortunately, new ownership came in and that. Yeah, kind of got uh, all of us. Kind of got like with Joe. That yeah. uh, there was a whole group yeah. of us that left at the same time. Um, I went up to Canada, did a little coaching up there. I was a freaking nightmare with that. That situation mm -hmm. wound up being a nightmare. Um, moved out of there, did some coaching, came down here, doing some coaching again, and then getting and then, back into it. And then when you're here, like well, you got, I mean, you were doing the youth stuff and yeah. you know the rinks and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. What was your role around here? Yeah, well, that? I got back into it just to get my name out there yeah. like, and see what's going on in the hockey world. So the stars are right there for me. Bob Basson actually is the guy, yeah. you know, Bob's like, Hey, listen, I got a job for you. We can, we can get you going here with the extreme team and doing camps and clinics. Um, from there, it even progressed into working at the ranks, got in now, which, which was cool for me because I'm, I'm not a school guy. I learned how to use all the management yeah. stuff. So it was kind of like on the job training for management, learn how to do a bunch of different programs and all that kind of stuff and scheduling and learned all that stuff through the stars did that for four years and then now i'm just kind of just doing my own thing yeah like getting back into it i want to i want to coach um that's one of the things unfortunately with that is there's a prerequisite you can't coach yep so i want to coach i want you to want coach to coach kids. i want to coach, coach teams. nhl wise you want to coach the younger i found like you know i'm doing 17 18 year old yeah. kids now and even when I would, well, yeah. I don't think I missed you because I went to Kalamazoo and I yeah. coached there and then we went to Salt yeah. Lake City with the minor league team. I'm finding the younger guys, I, I find that they they believe you more. They believe whatever you tell them is going to get them to the NHL. You yeah. know, so there's some of them now they're changed a little bit. Yeah. I mean, we've got a, they're, the kids are all different now, yeah. right? But, but is you have a certain evil, uh, my, level? My, that my, my favorite like little wheelhouse, yeah. I would say would probably be 12 to 17 because that's that, that's that. It's, yeah. it's, they're still gotta, moldable. They're still moldable, but there's also you can be honest with them right up. They're starting to get it. Like I, I'm pretty honest with the kids. Like, listen, like, what is your ultimate goal? Is it to make the NHL? Mine, I try to switch everybody is to just play hockey as long as you can at the highest level possible. Mm -hmm. That's it. That's yeah. what you want to do. And yeah. if that's the NHL, awesome. If it's the KHL, awesome. If it's the East Coast League, great. Some of the best success stories are like I got this buddy named Craig Stahl. He was he lived around the corner from me growing up. Um, he was not always the, the, the top scorer, but he was a tough guy, man. He killed guys. He was really tough. Wound up being like a nine, tenth rounder to the Detroit Red Wings. The guy plays maybe one exhibition game, two exhibition games, fought, did good, but just wasn't in the cards for him. He was yeah. in Detroit Red Wings, freaking uh, uh, in the heyday. Yeah. Good luck getting on that team. Yeah, well, for right. one, his last name's Stahl, right. not Stalkovich or something yeah. like that, <laughs> yeah. right? So he, he didn't have a chance. Yeah. So. Yeah. But he's one of those guys that just kept on playing. He played in the East Coast League, and he played in the Whipple, and then he played over in the Florida League. And he, this guy now owns like four different companies due to the networking and the success of just, but he, from all those life lessons and meeting people, that's a success story. That's what hockey did for him. Mm -hmm. That's a success story to me. Yeah. That's that. So that, to me, that's what I try to teach to these kids at, at this level is like, don't just put your goal on this one thing of w winning that cup because guess what? There's a lot of guys play in the league that don't even do yeah, it. There's 31 other teams with full right, of 23 guys right. that want to want the same right. thing. Right, and every, you know, that easy. every year the sifter, you know, you, you, yeah. you, the good players they always rise to the top. So, you know, and Dallas is a pretty competitive market. We have a lot of kids that have moved in from mm -hmm. L.A. Uh, man. Tons of kids from California coming in this area, man. They got a good program out there. Northern kids out of New York and Michigan that are coming in. I think hockey down here needs new coaches, and it, I mean we're here. There's a lot of guys. I I I don't have a team, but I've offered myself out to a couple of them. Yeah. 
I'll come out and help you guys and hang out with you guys. I just like being on the ice with the kids. Um, and if you can, you know, it's like kind of like you. It's you're you're kind of a weird dude. You were my first first roommate. Kind of. Kind of, yeah. Hmm. First roommate, I got home, sent home from Kalamazoo. That, weird enough that you brought that up. The one time in Kalamazoo, I got sent home the one time and had to go to your house for dinner. That's when I met the boys uh, because I was overweight. Yeah. And and the, the, you're just like, dude, like you got like a week. And you kind of taught me like, you got to start eating this way and start doing this. And you got to start putting your priorities in yeah. check. You kind of Bob gaining me a little bit. Um, but that's what we did back then. Now... I'm in that position, and that's what I try. Yeah, now you pass uh, it now, on. Now I try to pass it Again, and do the same passing thing. Passing the torch along, And right? you know what? It's awesome to be able to say, you know, well, hey, I didn't invent this. I heard it from Craig Ludwig. Yeah. Which, and then you, like what you said earlier, I heard it from Bob Larry. Larry. In, you know, Larry uh, Robinson. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, the same. You know, yeah, and that's what it's all about. It's about handing it back. Now, that's the, beauty the, of the negative game. side of your whole hockey career mm -hmm. is we all have demons and things that come out. Yeah. You kind of ran into the concussion. Yeah. And that's a long road for you. Yeah, it is. It's a tough one. I think it's for everybody. First thing is uh, just realizing that you got it. You know that. that is it, it realizing it or admitting it? Uh, you could, uh, I think I'm realizing asking you for it, myself. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I didn't like my wife was like I, I the, the cool guys that I met here uh, from the wellness center here is they the, the chair they sit you in these two chairs. Well, there's two chairs sitting in this room, and I sat down and basically I'm like. I thought he was going to sit in that chair, and he goes, "Oh no, that's 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 for your wife." And I was like, uh, "He goes, well, she's going to come in one of these times." And we went in. She comes in, and, and then they, they start asking you questions, and you answer them, and then straight up look on their face is like, mm -mm, "That's not true. telling you the whole story," type stuff. So then they kind of tell their story about it, and you're like, hmm, "This is kind of interesting." <laughs> I don't know. I didn't see it that way. But they, and then from that, they like are like almost talking over her, like finishing her sentence of things like, "Well, he would do that." Well, and then they were like pre knowing what, what she was going to say. She's like, "I've seen this guy a million times." Since then, I get a lot. Of, I've gotten some military guys in there as well. Um, basically, all they did is it's numbers. Take your blood, get your numbers, get your chemicals down, like. My pituitary gland is sheared. Is that, that's what we've figured out is from all those constant hits. It's a mm -hmm. little bit messed up in there, um, but there's ways to kind of relax it and keep it cool. So that's all we do is find a way to make sure that we're not long road <laughs> too far this way, too far that way. And so you have to you manage it then. Or? Yeah, really. It's it, it, at work out, eat right. Yeah, I'll go back to Lula Morello. Eat right, drink right, and sleep right. If you're tired, go to bed. Yeah. Don't fight it. You know, it's we're. We, what we are so it, it's it's just a constant bruise that you've had or whatever you know like mine i have my main issue is an eye injury i got hit right here and i i don't have uh the ligaments from the top of my eye here and here mm -hmm. so my eye kind of flutters oh. so i had these headaches for like the longest oh, time okay yeah i couldn't figure it out and then <laughs> and when i walk i every maybe like 30 40 steps i'll like cross over to my right like almost like i'm falling over kind of a weird thing and I yeah. would always walk with my wife and like this is we're talking 15 years of this and we didn't never know why well we finally did this test and they put these glasses on me and I'm sitting there doing like the test. Like beer goggles? Kind of yeah. yeah they're like these cameras that like two cameras they're facing you like this they're right here you can't see anything but and they're right here but you can see through them it's like this weird thing where there's this red light and you watch this light and my wife gasped I was like Okay, well, that's not good. You know? <laughs> and it happened a couple of times. Not like terribly, but, but more of like a, oh, like, wow. Like, what? Wow, I can't believe it. My left eye tracks normal, but my right eye would just start shaking. Well, every time your eye, if your eyes aren't looking at the same thing, you're blind. So when you go blind, you like fall over, right? Well, I started doing these things with these guys. I, my sight is doing great. I don't have, I don't walk. I don't have headaches anymore. It's just so it's, it, it, it can be, it's. You can. Yeah, you can, you can manage it. it. You can yeah. make it better. It's just like anything. It's like if you have a, you have to rehab it. That's that's it. So, if this, they they put me in the gyro chair, and you know, like I started off at level five. I can get up to like level fifteen. I haven't been there, and, and I haven't been back for a while. I'll be honest with you, mm -hmm. I haven't been back because I'm. You're one of those guys, like, I feel great. Why go to the doctor when you're feeling yeah. great? Pro not the, not really the right way to go with a brain. Well, injury. I think the reason that you probably haven't gone back lately is because you spend a little more time in the tattoo 
parlors. Yeah, a little bit. Huh? <laughs> You're, you, you and Mama are into the ink, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. Got, got the bug right now. Yeah, yeah. I, I see last that. time. I know you got <laughs> more animals on you time. than fucking Dallas Zoo. Yeah, here. I know. They're gonna call me, make me walk around. Uh, well, it keeps you going. Well, Luke, yeah. I want to tell you. Well, first thing I want to, because you mentioned something about Jersey before. Yeah. So I want you to give me one thing, and we're gonna end this thing. Okay. Each team. Okay. So let's start Tampa Bay. Okay. Just one thing about it. What, what stands out when you were there? Uh, the brotherhood. Just okay. that brotherhood that we had. Okay. Brotherhood. And now, from there, you went to New York the Island? Yeah. What, what's that? Did you ever, by the way, were you ever there when Millbury was around? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. So, I don't yeah, want, you I just, don't want you to just put words asked, in you your mouth. You literally just asked that, that question right before I'm going to give up, you a word. I? Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, Is that what you were going to say? Absolute discord for any path of success. I don't know. <laughs> It was all sad. right, Mike. Bro, well, there you it, go. Was, it was it was so shoot from the hip. There was di- we had flights with no food. We flew into the wrong town once. Like, oh no! Oh yeah, that we <laughs> with no cars. We were like, I remember Ricky Di Pietro sitting on our bags. On I, my feet were on Ricky, like bait me. Uh, four of us in the back of a cab at four in the morning, driving right through the middle of Manhattan because we flew into New Jersey instead of our place, and he didn't order any buses or anything. All right. Well, I wanted to get Milbury on, so I'm not sure if that's going to work. So uh, I, I, honestly, I love Mike, though, dude. He is I hilarious. I text him every once in a while when he's, he's on hilarious. the air. You know, I think yeah, you, you get him needle him yeah. a little bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. You can't New Jersey, but don't say Lou. Oh man. I know. Uh, it kind of. Yeah, it kind of goes Scott Gomez. <laughs> you can go whoever you want. No. Uh, you know what? You and Mi- you said beautiful there. I loved it there. Oh, the town. Yeah. Oh, okay. But like the state is pretty beautiful. Okay, like, you get. I, I'm. A, I'm. I'm a, I like to get off. So, the what's the positive there. about Jersey? Uh, the, the positive about Jersey, honestly, that it was. It, again, it was a really close team. I don't know yeah. the exact word for it. We I again. Was, I, you know, if I was to say anything about that team, honestly, we missed two cups by that much, like by a sliver, by a, two mistakes. So the word just came to me, and, and we're Dallas, Tampa. Jersey Island, maybe not as much as you know the early, but culture, yeah, like that's culture. Okay, yeah. So then from there, Vancouver, you can put culture in that again too. It was very, very, it it was awesome. I love being there. Yeah, I was I was born in Vancouver, so <laughs> even like right from day one, my after I was with Dallas, I sent I was like Carlos, like called Vancouver. I'm like serious. I'm like, you're not you're not even allowed to do that. Like. You're a restricted free agent. I'm like, no, but tell them like forever. I always want to be. I want. I want to be a Vancouver Canuck. They're my favorite team growing up. Mm-hmm. I want to be BCTV. I want them. I I want to do this. And every, after every, every single time a contract would come up, <laughs> <laughs> and they'd be like, no, no, not in the cards. no, not for you, not for you. And then I finally got my chance, and I got to play, and I got to score this really. Cool goal. That was really neat. The the the, the Sedins set me up, and it was really neat. It was a game winner against Buffalo, and I got this really cool shot and everything in my hometown. Everybody was there to be. That, that's that's one of my top five moments of all time because that's what I wanted to do as a kid yeah. was score a goal at home in Vancouver. So that like you winning two cups, the Memorial Cup thing is yeah. cool, but everyone's asking, "What is your greatest moment?" That is literally one of the greatest moments ever for cool. a young kid yeah. was playing in Vancouver, scoring a goal for my hometown. Okay. That was wicked. Now we go full circle yep. back to Dallas. Yep. Finish it. Your home. It's your home now. Exactly that. I got to go home at the end of it. Um, I never wanted to leave. I mean, no one yeah. ever like, especially because yeah. of what we had accomplished and. Personally, I, or like when we left, I left when Tippett came in and he brought in some new guys and that. And I was like, oh man, like I really wanted, I actually really wanted to be a part of that. Yeah. I mean, it worked out for me. I was in Tampa and we got to win, but I really wanted to be a part of that part of, of Dallas. I always had a house here. I always came back to Dallas. I love Dallas. It's will be home and is home. I never plan on leaving cool. again. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it, it, it. That's probably the perfect word. This is home. I mean, I've yeah. I've lived in the states and I've lived in uh, in Canada, and I, I'm I'm 46 years old now. I think I've now lived in Dallas for like 26 years, you know, tw- and 20 years in Canada. <laughs> I played with Tip. You mentioned Dave Tip, but I played with Tip in college, and I, I love the guy. And I'm kind of like, unfortunately for some people, I'm like the fucking Grim Reaper. So the night, the night. 
Tip comes over, he was into building bikes. Like he built his own Harley, you know, he, he likes building them and things like that. So he comes over to my house out in Little Elm, um, you know, again, a few years ago. Comes over, sit at the pool, have a few beers. And, uh, you know, he takes off next morning. He got fired. So, yeah, yeah you know, kind of like I said, Grim Reaper. Um, <laughs> that's okay, I've done it to other coaches. <laughs> got other coaches fired. Luco, uh, thank you. Candid, I would love to be the Maury Povich or who's the other dude, uh, not Dr. Phil, but kind of follow up with you and your wife at some point. Let's I do love, it, man. I, No, I'd, seriously, I'd, yeah. I'd love to be able to hear that conversation. I think it's yeah. worth having that conversation. I think it's good for a lot of people to hear about it. I had a great talk with Chris Nyland, um, Billy Heward, who, um, you know, Huey, um, Huey actually is writing a book. Oh, he, great. He's got a lot of similarities and stuff. No doubt. There, there's a lot of the same stuff going on. I think it needs to be heard and, and talked about. But And again, I, I appreciate you coming in here. We'll do this again. Yeah. So um, there's your episode this week of uh, Suds with Luds. It's Suds. It's it's something. It's Seltzer with Luds. I guess that's what it was today. I feel like I let you down, bud. Oh, no, man. It, it, you know who lets us down is the studio. We're supposed to have cases of beer here for this show. The name Suds. You know how much it, trouble it? I would have gotten if I would have brought this into the dressing room? Yeah. Like, yeah you you, you would have literally sent me out. Yeah. Well, and it was a dry county back then. I would have had to drive so listen, far. Next next time we'll we'll have the, the shelves stocked with Miller Lite. Okay, so, good. Another episode, Suds with Luds. Appreciate everybody listening. <laughs> Thanks to Brad Lukowicz, and we are probably going to be off to the alumni skate here in a couple days. Let's do it. Thanks, man. Bye, bud.